Hello colleagues, my name is Possible and I will be your tutor for today. Today we are going to learn microeconomics and the topic is consumer surplus. We are still working under the invisible hand of the market, which is demand and supply. I hope it makes sense. Now today is of no exception. We are starting another concept which is very, very important. And that is what is called consumer surplus. Now up to this point, you should be able to understand consumer and the surplus. When you talk about consumer, consumers are the people who patronize a product. They are the individuals who consume products. And then when we talk about surplus, we are talking about the benefits in something value, extra value in something. I hope it makes sense. So putting them together, what is called consumer surplus, we are saying that sometimes in the market, when a consumer is going to a market, he or she goes to the market with some expectation and anticipations. The consumer goes there with some estimates and some forecasts. I hope it makes sense. With the mindset that Probably, if I'm a consumer and I'm going to a market in order to buy this marker, as a rational consumer, I have to go with a mindset of price, an estimate of price. I hope it makes sense. An, an estimate, like a forecast of price. So, provided my estimate is to buy this marker at the price of five Ghana cities, at the price of five Ghana cities, and when I went to the market, I realized that the actual price of the market is two Ghana cities. So the difference between the estimates, the forecast, the budgeted amount, which was the five Ghana cities, and the amount that I actually paid for the market will become what is called surplus, consumer surplus. So we are saying that consumer surplus is the difference between the price that the consumer estimated, he estimated to purchase the product on the market and the actual price that the consumer bought the product. I hope it makes sense. Good. So the consumer was willing to buy the market at the price of five Ghana cities. That's the expected price. But at the end of the day, he bought it at the price of three Ghana cities. So when you talk about consumer surplus, is the difference between this, which is two Ghana cities. So the consumer surplus will be two Ghana cities. So we are saying that two Ghana cities, two Ghana cities is the consumer surplus. I hope it makes sense. Now, having understood this one, look at it carefully. When you talk about consumer surplus, consumer surplus is the difference between the price that consumers pay and the price they are willing to pay i hope it makes sense so it is the price that consumers or is the difference between difference between the price that consumers actually pay consumers pay underline and the price they are willing to pay so willing to pay is underlined so the price they pay against the price they are willing to pay i hope it makes sense that one will give you the difference between that will give you what is called consumer surplus i hope it makes sense now that is to say that it is the benefit it is the benefit benefit is underlined or the value that consumers get from a good but do not necessarily pay for it is the benefit of consumers. Now, I went there with an anticipation of five Ghana cities. By the end of the day, I end up buying the thing at three Ghana cities. So the benefit I'm getting is two Ghana cities in my pocket. I hope, I hope it makes sense. And that is what is called consumer surplus. Consumer surplus. Now look at the diagram here. We are saying that we can use a diagram to explain consumer surplus consumer surplus look at the diagram this is a demand curve now listen to me as soon as we hear consumer surplus make reference to demand curve or demand 
And when you hear something like producer surplus, you make reference to supply. Kef. I hope it makes sense. Nice one. So consumer corresponds to demand. So consumer surplus, we are, we are working on the demand curve. Now we are saying that the consumer surplus is this area. Is this area. I hope it makes sense. So geometrically, geometrically, diagrammatically, consumer surplus is the area. It is the area below the demand curve. Area below below the demand curve but above the equilibrium price i hope it makes sense area below the demand curve but above the equilibrium price so it is the area below the demand curve now looking at it carefully geometrically we could see that the consumer surplus is here up to here and then goes here. That is the consumer surplus. So I'm trying to lift up the consumer surplus diagram. The consumer surplus alone. The surplus alone. I'm trying to lift that diagram. If I'm lifting it up, I'll get something like this. Whereby here will be P. Whereby here will be P, and then here becomes our PE, and then here becomes our P. Look at it carefully. And then the inside becomes what is called consumer surplus. Looking at this one, we could see that we have lifted up the diagram of consumer surplus from the entire demand curve. I hope it makes sense. So this is the consumer surplus. And we have lifted it up here. Now the P is here. The PE is here. And the equilibrium, the equilibrium, sorry, and the equilibrium or the market clearing or the interior solution is here. Can you see this? Good. Now having seen this one like this, let me ask you a question. What type of plane figure is like this? You are right. Is right angle triangle. I hope it makes sense. And once it is right angle triangle, we can use right angle triangle formula to calculate for the consumer surplus, which is the area of the right angle triangle. I hope it makes sense. So, going back small, to understand the fact that consumer surplus is the area below the demand curve geometrically is the area below the demand curve but above the equilibrium price i hope it makes sense nice one and the computation for this the formula is consumer behavior cs is equal to a half times And the base here, base, the base is here to here. I hope it makes sense. That is the base from here to here, from here to here. But when you bring it down here, the base is equilibrium quantity. The base is from here, here to here, here to here. But when you trace it down to the Q line, the base is equilibrium quantity. So the base is half times base, so the base is the equilibrium quantity times height. Now when you look at it carefully, you can see that the height is from here to here. Height is from here to here, here to here. So the height is the difference between this one and this one, this one and this one, because we are already on the P line. The reason why we trace this one to here is that this is the main Cartesian plane. This is the Q line. So we needed to trace this one to the Q line. Supposing this one is here, we would have traced it to here. I hope it makes sense. So here is the P line, here is the Q line. So the, the height is P minus PE. The 
the highest minus the smallest. So the height is P minus PE. So that is the formula for calculating consumer surplus. It's half times base. And the base is the equilibrium quantity times height. And the height is P minus PE. I hope it makes sense. That is the formula for calculating equilibrium um, surplus, um, consumer surplus. Now, in our next lecture, we are going to look at producer surplus. And then from there, we bring the two together and then we try to do some computations. But before I leave you, let me give you a gift. And the gift is that sometimes, having known, having known that here is the consumer surplus, there could be some alterations. There could be an instance where they will say that the demand function has changed. When the demand function changes and comes somewhere probably here, somewhere probably here, looking at this one and this one, the demand curve here not, and the demand curve one, we could see that there has been a change in the demand curve. Now when you see something like this, don't be confused. The equilibrium, the equilibrium will come here. We'll move from here, E0 to E1. I hope it makes sense. When you move from E0 to E1, trust me, the consumer surplus has also moved from here. From here. The entire space here. Here. It has moved from here. Here. To here alone. To here alone. I hope you could see it. So this portion is no more part of the consumer surplus. I hope you could see it. This portion is no more because there has been a decrease in the consumer surplus. And now our consumer surplus is now somewhere, let me say, P1. I hope it makes sense. So from the height will be, the height of this one will be P1 minus PE. That is the height. And then, and then this one also will be QE1, and here not. So the base also will be QE1. The base will be QE1. I hope it makes sense. Nice one. So this is a gift I'm giving you because you might probably miss some of these things. Once again, my name is Possible, and watch out for our next lecture. Subscribe to the channel. Make sure to subscribe so that you can get any updates. God bless you. Bye-bye.